is going on out there, everybody? <laughs> and thanks again for joining us here on Expanded Perspectives with me, Cam Hale, and sitting next to me, the lunger himself, the man that's barely alive, Mr. Kyle Filio Filson. How's it going, everybody? Yes, I'm here in Skeleton Studios, Freedom Filson. Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing well. I'm getting better and better, stronger and stronger every day. I feel better. You sound great. I look today, better. Man. Uh, I don't know about that. <clears throat> well, I look better than I did. That doesn't mean I look good. That just That's means I look better. That's not hard to do, though. No, no. You only had two places to go up or in a hole. That was the only two places to go. Uh, speaking of Freedom Filson, I was watching Live PD last night after yes, the hockey game. Yes. There was a guy on there. He was a street person, <clears throat> and his nickname was Freedom. But it wasn't spelled with a PH. No, it was not. But I, anyways, I thought that was entertaining. He, the cops asked him how he got his name. He said it was given to him when he was in prison. Uh, not sure why. Is that where you got yours? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's when I got mine. Freedom. 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 Filson. Ever since I adopted that moniker, though, my life has just been in turmoil. Well, you so got, I don't know you how to work I'm harder for it. freedom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a constant reminder. Um, but yeah, no, I'm doing good, man. The weather's turning nice. Spring is it's in working the out air. good for you. Uh, <clears throat> Pox of Tony Phil was correct. You know, the, the, what is that? The groundhog. I didn't realize that a groundhog and a woodchuck were the same thing. <clears throat> the only reason I say that is because Luke's a big fan of the Geico commercials with the woodchucks that yeah. are always throwing the wood, you know? He just stop chucking my wood. Yeah. And uh, they were asking me questions. I was like, you know, I don't think I've ever seen a woodchuck. I've seen squirrels and chipmunks and. Groundhogs, prairie dogs. Well, I mean, not groundhogs, but prairie dogs and mm -hmm. all sorts of things. So, you know, like Luke likes to do, Luke's Googling it. And yeah, it turns out a woodchuck's the same thing as a groundhog. So he has been researching the whole thing now. Yeah, I didn't know they were the same. I've Those never seen a groundhog either. I've seen prairie dogs and what like high-powered rifles will do to them <laughs> out in West Texas. <laughs> First hand. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, so with, let's see, Luke loves with with the crazy research and all that have you had him watch groundhog day oh with uh bill murray, bill murray? no he's do he, you like that film oh i like that film he doesn't have the patience for that it has to have some kind of monster in it something like that um <clears throat> you know something star really, wars creatures if it doesn't have anything like that then no he, he he's just not into it do you know what i read about that movie alone no. That somebody did the the numbers of how long it would take for him to learn everything. You know, he, he stuck day after day after day in that town. And so they were figuring up how long it would take for him to learn all the things that he learned about everybody in the town, right. all the new things that he learned. Like he's playing the piano, he's singing songs, you know, he's, he's driving the bus, he's doing all this stuff. They said it would have taken him reliving that same day like 30 years to learn all that. I don't know why. Now, how crazy talking is that? All of a sudden. How crazy is 30 years reliving now, how the same would they ask, day? Now, how would they go about figuring that? I don't know. I don't know. Like, But it's like everything else. You go online, you start looking on Reddit, you start looking on all this stuff. They have a, 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 a formula of figuring up you know, what it would take you to learn to play the piano that well. How many days mm. of playing all that it would take. Then how many days it would take of interactions with people to where you finally broke them down enough to where they would be willing to talk to you. Like if you just walked up to somebody on the street and started talking, they're going to walk away. Right. They're going to feel awkward. But if you did that enough to where you would get little remnants of information from them every day, you would finally walk up and be like, hey, Susan, aren't you from Toronto? Don't you remember me? And then you'd go into that because you would broke her down a little over time or the same, you know, his buddy. and all. So it would take days. And they've kind of I figured gotcha. that formula up to know, OK, it would be 30 years worth of time. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a long time. It is a long time. Yeah, it would be. But can you? I'm living the same day over and over. Ugh. Ugh. You were talking about learning piano and yeah. things like that. Are, are kids these days learning stuff like that? Because yes. I know at my house, uh, they just simply do not have the patience to learn almost anything. Like they, it, It's become such a culture of instantaneous gratification that they're not into anything. Like, you know, I've talked about it before. Caleb shoots his <clears throat> bow at archery stuff. And you can tell the frustration. And I'm like, what's wrong? I don't just I just don't understand why I can't hit the bullseye every time. I'm like, well, it's it's called practice. And it's like it's a new thing for them. Like they don't understand because everything in their world is if you want to watch that movie, I watch it now. Yeah. If I want to uh upgrade my character on whatever video game, I, well, I just it. spend the money and I can upgrade it now. Like there's no work. There's no work. There's no like putting in the time. And I try to explain to them like that's the enjoyment. It's the journey. No, uh -uh. It's going from being garbage to being good. It's the time it takes. That's the reward. 
they're not interested. Not, they will be. It'll it, it'll happen. It's just going to be. I think it is. I think you're right. I think it's harder for kids these days to uh, to embrace that because it's so much. Because like you and I've always talked about, you hear all these parents getting mad at their children for playing video games or not wanting to go outside and do things that we used to do. But you and I've already agreed because we played video games for the longest time. Is if we were kids. And we could have gotten on a video game system, yeah. put our headphones on, spoke to each other, and played and never left our house. I would have probably never left my room for right. the longest yeah, time. Like, I understand the draw. I definitely understand that. But, I, hey, dude, I get caught up in the same thing. You ever get caught up to where you want to watch something and then it's like it's buffering and you're getting aggravated and you've got to back out oh, and start yeah. again? And then you realize you're like... What am I doing? Like yeah. I can't wait sixty seconds for this right. to take. It used place. to take you know ten minutes to download used to, some photographs of something off the internet, and now like you're instantly pissed if you can't live stream a UFC fight illegally, yeah. and then it's like buffering for ten seconds. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? Why is this not working flawlessly? <laughs> yeah. Well, now my kids have been come. They've become aware that you can do internet speed tests. And so now they're pissed all the time. Like, well, like, how come it's only like 200 megabytes per second? Like, that's not near enough. Why don't we upgrade? And you're like, dude, you realize how fast that is? <laughs> that's like good for anything you need to do. No, 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 no. I, I need to, I'm, I'm like, are you uploading and downloading like giant massive files to the internet I'm not aware of? And it's because they came, they didn't know it even existed. And I guess they saw it on YouTube. And then, then <laughs> So now they're constantly testing and they're like, hey, dude, the ping... The ping is like not as fast as it needs to be. And they're looking at me like I need to do something. Yeah. Like what get you, up off your you ass and get us some better quality. Go I down need to the Google store fiber here. You give know, me some ping. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to build some scaffolding on this Fortnite or whatever. <laughs> get up off your ass. I need Google fiber. <laughs> you're like, what? That's the kind of grief you're catching from your kids. Yeah. Never ends. I'm like, I was almost dead two weeks ago. What, remember what I told you a long time ago? Yeah. It still holds true. You were in the hospital near death. Now that you're back out, dad's okay. Dad's back about six rungs down. Like, you're not important anymore. Just go make that money. Just yeah. get out of here. Yeah. Like, oh, dad's fine. See, I told y'all he'd pull through. Did you, <laughs> did you have it. a good Valentine's Day? I had a wonderful Valentine's Day. We went and ate. My wife and I, I took my wife and my daughter out. And then all over the weekend, my wife and I went and we I took her out to a, a an early, like an early lunch, kind of like a brunch. <clears throat> And then we went and got, I don't even, I went and bought my wife a new shop vac. <laughs> she wanted a new shop vac. Oh, you're one of those so, guys, right? Buys gifts for others, yeah. even though it's something you really want. No, I've got one. Oh. She wanted one her, she wanted big, her own? a smaller one. Yeah, because the one I got, like most tools, when I buy them, I overkill it a little bit. So like, it's like, what's the biggest shop vac yeah. you got? Let me have that yeah, one. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> So, it, and it's, look, it's so obscene. There's no reason to drag it around. And when you turn it on, it sounds like a jet engine running in your house. So I got her like a smaller, and then we ended up going to uh, get pedicures. And then we ended oh, up wow. going to get a massage. So Man. we had massages and pedicures and new vacuum. Man, I didn't do anything. We just uh, grilled some steaks and some lobster tails. Well, that's and, something. Uh, hung out. Uh, we did go to Texas Day Brazil like four days prior to that. Well, that's for awesome. Lunch. Yeah, it was really good. You know, it's just one of those Brazilian, I don't know what whoa, you call whoa, whoa, them, where whoa. they keep coming around with big skewers of meat. You just turn that puck over green. Mine, I didn't know there was a red side for the longest time. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was. Did you get into the uh, the salad bar? I did. My problem is since I've been released from the hospital, my appetite's not very much. So I got full pretty quick. But I'll tell you, that's the hack at Texas Day Brazil. If you go there for lunch, it's the same as the, as the dinner, but it's only like $20. Perfect. So why not just go yeah. there? For lunch. And try to tell yourself you're not going to eat at the salad oh. bar. Oh, but I it fast. doesn't work. I fast. I'm like, what's the guy that eats all the hot dogs? Joey uh, Chestnut. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of the Japanese guy. Oh, Joey Chestnut's Kobayashi. the champ. Uh, I, ex I start expanding my stomach lining with Kobayashi's water. second place. I'm not listening to this. But he was joke. the title holder for a long time. Yeah, this, he's not now. Whoever this Loser. Andy Chestnut guy is. I think I played softball with Andy Chestnut. <laughs> I know some chestnuts. Mm. Taylor. Yeah. Mitchell. <laughs> All right, well, I got I something. Care. I yeah, got something. Let's get into the news. This goes in with all of our British family over the pond over here. A few weeks ago, I spotted this on Live Science, and I've been waiting to see how this plays out, and it's it's interesting. Live Science posted that British X-Files of UFO sightings are going public, that the UK's Ministry of Defense 
will publish secret UFO reports for the very first time, Philly. It says, from the early 1950s until 2009, a department in the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense, the MOD, the M-O-D, mm -hmm. documented and investigated reports of UFOs. And now, more than a decade after this program ended, I'm going to go ahead and put my interjection of allegedly. Many of those formerly classified files about these sightings will be made available to the public for the very first time. Now, some mod files about the UFOs have been published online, of course, at the National Archive website for the UK. But all of the agency's reports now will be released this year on a dedicated gov.uk webpage. Now, this was a spokesperson for the British Royal Air Force was talking to the Telegraph discussing all this. They go on to say here that the decision came after the PA Media, a British news agency, filed a request for the UFO files under the Freedom of Information Act. And according to the Telegraph, the MOD official decided, and I quote, it would be better to publish these records rather than continue sending documents to the National Archives. So it goes on and it talks about how it spiked the, the fascination in the right. 1950s and it prompted MOD to form this flying saucer working party. Mm. And that they went through it. And since the early 50s, of course, they've gone and done all this stuff. And it even says here that Prime Minister Winston Churchill sent a memo to his air minister in 1952 asking, and here's another quote, what does all the stuff about flying saucers amount to and what can it mean? What is the truth? So there's a heck of it. And like I said, this article goes on. Mindy Weisenberger, the senior writer there at Live Science, uh, wrote about this whole thing. It's a great little article, but it's also something – that you and I've been discussing off air is it seems to be more and more people, more and more, let's say not people, but governments are starting to slowly open the filters because yeah. of what has happened with, with favor from what has come forward with, uh, with our buddy, uh, uh, come on, help me out now. Which buddy Corbell that just, I just went, oh, Bob, Lazar. Corbell, Bob Lazar, Bob Lazar, some <clears throat> stuff. And of course, yeah. with, with Lieutenant favor and all the things, the I feel, tic -tacs. Yeah, it I seems feel like, like we're on the precipice of something yeah. coming and the government knows it, so they're trying to get in front of it by releasing all this stuff. That's like exactly somehow what it feels like. Like maybe they're in contact with these said extraterrestrials, and the extraterrestrials have given them a date. Like, hey, you know, if you don't let everybody know that on June eighth, two thousand twenty-two, we're gonna come out of the oceans, we're gonna come out of the skies, and we're gonna announce our presence. So we're giving you a little time to break them in, <laughs> because it seems like all of a sudden. Nobody's hush hush about it. Everybody's like, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're aware. And they're releasing stuff. People are coming out. I mean, don't of all the conspiracy theories we've covered on this show, and all the people that, you know, we know have been assassinated over time. Uh, you don't think it'd be easy to get rid of Bob Lazar or the uh, David Fravor or any of these whistleblowers? You know how easy that would be? I mean, if you can assassinate a president or somebody else. Uh, a high-ranking official or civil rights leader. You don't think you could just get rid of a scientist, a metallurgist? Yeah. Of course. The reason they're not is because it's like it's all coming to to the zero-point hour. Like, we, there's something that's coming out. They can't stop that. So instead of denying up until the date that that happens, that they're like, yeah, we've been actually watching UFOs. We didn't stop on Project Blue Book uh, blue book when project blue book ended I used to have some of those sunglasses blue, the blue blocker man those things are awesome i like the new one now where it's just a visor you put down that like apparently fighter pilots use have you not seen these commercials Look how anyway easy i see it is i get, to get distracted. Him sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's like they know they can't deny 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 up until the point so now they're like trying to pretend like they're the nice yeah. guy. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're, we're, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're the, <laughs> come here, buddy. We're 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 gonna start releasing information. We're gonna make it public because you guys are right. We shouldn't be holding this for ourselves. We're gonna start coming forward because now through the the work of Tom DeLong over there at the uh, to the Stars Academy, like there's just a lot of things coming out, and the government doesn't seem like they're interested in suppressing it. Where they have been very interested in suppressing it. This whole time, our yeah. whole lifetime. Now they're not. Now they're not too worried about it because to me it feels like there's something inevitable coming and they can't stop it. So yeah, they're going to try to come clean, right? Uh, speaking of aliens and UFOs, imagine Cam being abducted and and not only finding out that you've been abducted, but 
realizing you've been abducted more than one time. I don't want to know anything about any of that. Imagine not just knowing you've been abducted, but waking up in the morning and discovering blood all over you in your bed. Kind of like the scene from The Godfather. When the oh, guy that's wakes happened up to me before. With the horse's head. Remember that? Check this out. It says, one early morning in the winter of 1990, I awoke from a very deep sleep, feeling nervous as my heart pounded heavily. It was around 3.35 a.m. and It was still dark outside. I sensed that there was someone in my bedroom, but all I could see was a spot of light in the corner by my dresser. Suddenly, several hands grabbed me from all around the bed. I attempted to scream, but could not. I couldn't move or say anything. Nothing came out of my mouth. Within, within seconds, I found myself lying on a cold, hard table, completely nude and terribly uncomfortable. I looked around me, and there were four small beings in hoods and loose robes standing around me. They were conversing with each other, but I couldn't understand what they were saying since it sounded like young child's gibberish. I felt something touching me all over my body, but I could not see anything. The beings' faces had a weird glow with sagging folds of shining skin. After what seemed like forever, these beings slowly moved aside and this human-like man walked up to my side. He was tall, bald, and had very pale skin. He also had large round eyes and was very slim. He came over to the table and started to talk to me in English. He said calmly that he was perplexed that I was so scared, since he made it clear that last time that we had met, he would return and ask me to do a favor. He then turned and raised his hand, gesturing to a woman who walked into the room. Now she seemed to be a normal human female. It was quite beautiful. She had a small bundle in her arms and walked over to me. It was an infant, but it had pale skin and didn't look quite human. The tall man instructed me that he wanted me to take the infant and care for it. It needed the love of a human mother since their race did not understand emotion or love. I told him that I couldn't because I already had a child. and It was hard enough raising my son alone since times were difficult for me currently. He raised his head up and down as if agreeing with what I said and passed his hands across my eyes. I must have passed out because I awoke and found myself back in my bed. It was daylight, and I had figured that I'd been gone for about five hours. When I tried to get out of my, my bed, my legs and hips were very stiff and sore. I carefully stood up and noticed two large spots of wet blood on the bed sheets. The experience with the beings was still fresh on my mind, but I had absolutely no idea that I had endured any probing or any kind of surgery. A few days later, I decided to schedule a doctor's appointment just to make sure I was okay. The doctor recommended a full physical since my blood pressure was higher than usual and my ankles were slightly swollen. An appointment was made by my local hospital for x-rays and local and uh, sorry, blood work. To make a long story short, I returned to my doctor's office a few days left after the tests were performed, and when I walked into her office, she asked me to sit down and explain that my right kidney was missing. She said that it was probably missing since birth and just never noticed it before. I found this hard to believe since I had given birth to my child and, had a, and have had other x-rays in the past. I just agreed with her assessment and was instructed I would need to start taking hypertension medication and would need to be regularly monitored. I am positive that these beings removed my kidney and performed other experiments on my body. Though it has been almost 20 years since that encounter, I know that one day they'll be back. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, Just, yeah, you heard me right. She's given birth before. Yeah, to a normal human child here never, on planet Earth. Yeah, but they've never said anything about, oh, did you know you didn't only had one kidney or any of that stuff? That's like, right. It makes me feel like, no, she had them both at one time. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I believe her. Maybe like maybe they did take them. Uh, yeah, I think they did. Got take, a sneaky took one of them. Took one of them. Yeah, at least took, yeah. Yeah. I don't think Dude, that's crazy. That no, you don't. That's because you would think that that would be something that your parents would tell you. 
that the doctors would have known, like surely a checkup or even say your parents didn't know you were born without one. That's just the way it was. You were rocking along. You would think that during like a, 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 your birth and, you know, and all that, they'd be like, you know, you've only got one kid. Yeah, you would think it would cause medical problems, right? Or at least maybe not a problem, but something that they would notice. They would be like, you know, there's a little telltale signs. Of course, I know this is going to be hard for all y'all listening to believe. I'm not a a doctor. I'm not a medicine <laughs> medical doctor. I've not really done any doctor work. Not a medical doctor, but you yeah. are a doctor in like research and things like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'm, you can get an honorary degree, yeah, can't you? Like yeah. the Universal Life Church. Oh, that's true. Yeah. There are places where you can get like, you can go online and just have a doctorate, just print it out and like... You know, of your the profession of your choosing. I think I'm gonna do that. It's like thirty bucks. Didn't we see like one guy was being a doctor in a Connex box and had a bunch of ladies coming to him or something? I definitely, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was giving gynecological oh exams out of yeah. a Connex or a shed, tool shed out of his yeah. backyard. This was in Florida. I that believe. sounds legit. Yeah. Once again, ladies, don't. I mean, you know, you get, it's a guy's doing that out of his shed. It's probably. I know it's cheap. <laughs> Probably cheap. There's a reason. Yeah, there's a reason. There's I wouldn't. Reason I wouldn't do that. Uh, I have had people now. I I don't hold a doctorate in anything, but I have really? had. Really, I have That's had. Surprising. <laughs> I've had others approach me through email and one time in person at a conference, wanting to know how they could become a cryptozoologist. And I told them, uh, pretty easy. Just you are one. Like just I I I like when you knight somebody. <laughs> I had a roll of paper in my hands. I kind of went on their bull shoulder. Yeah, you're one now. And they looked at me like, what? I'm like, it's not a real thing. Anybody can be a cryptozoologist. Instead of like ash on your forehead, you rub like mud because you're out in the field and then you got to do the holy trinity or whatever. If you're listening to this and you want to be a cryptozoologist, be one. Right? Like it doesn't take anything. We're going to go. You are one. If anybody asks. I mean, you just go out in a park and start looking around in a tree for a. Tell them we said you're one. Yeah, you're one. You're what? It's that simple. You're a cryptozoologist. All right. Hey, while we're on cryptozoology, let's take a quick break. When we get back, I'm going to get into that exact field, but it's something that's going on here in, in Tejas. There's a few other places it's happened. I had actually posted something about it a while back, and now there's a few more stories we're going to dig into. So when we get back, we're going to start looking into tales of hyenas in America. You're listening to Expanded Perspectives. Here we we go, y'all. Uh, like I said, we're going to, like Luke like, used to like to call them hyenas. Yep, hyenas. Hyenas. So, and I believe I have actually talked a while back, a long time ago, we were discussed, and I'm going to get into some more stories of the uh, Shunkawarkin, which was like a black dog or a hyena like dog. What is that it? Was the Shunkawarkin, which was, uh, it's Native American. It's a Native American spirit that's like, uh, I think, the Awe Indians. Indians. I think but it's supposed I, uh, to be like a. It's almost when they describe it. Before we get off on this, they describe it sloped, like lower in the rear end. Okay. Yeah. They describe the the feature supposed to be very short muzzle, kind of like hyena style, hyena style features. Things along I, those uh, lines. I think I ordered that one time at PF Chang's. How was it? It's good. I had not some bad. Uh, lettuce wraps with it and a spring roll. Very, <laughs> very tasty. Shunka working. Yeah. <laughs> not wasn't bad. Wasn't yeah, bad. I, I think it was a brand of sake. Right. Right. Yeah. I so, had it uh, piranhas. Now, there's always been these tales of through the American West of, of people that claim that they have seen hyenas and that they were American hyenas. Now, like I said, if you go back deep into the Native American tales, they describe something that they reported looked like that, something very similar to that. And even other tribes, they start talking about some, they said that they didn't look like wolves and they weren't like even in wolf territory. Okay. They were in different areas like that. This, this American hyena that we'll call it wasn't in the same areas and ranges that you would find wolves. Now they generally describe them often as being black or even a dark red. And they were very shaggy which was kind of funny. You know, you, I don't ever picture a hyena being shaggy, but they were talking about these things being shaggy. Now, during the time, they said that white settlers also thought that they had seen this thing and that some had even killed them and mounted them as trophies. Now, of course, as most of these great stories go, there's no place anybody can find these these mounted uh, American hyenas, right? We right. don't know where it's at. Have any idea. The only way it would be able to tell, I'm sure, is if you would could find one if there was enough, when you go through the tanning process, it destroys the DNA. 
So if you could ever have some DNA enough to where you could test it, maybe you could have found out what kind of, if it was a wild dog, if it was just simply like you and I have discussed blue dogs where they look like mangy coyotes, they're built a little different. Like they talked about with the, uh, uh, what the chupacabra, the way it looks yeah. here in Texas is not anything like they describe in Puerto Rico. It looks almost like a whole different species of coyote. Nothing like uh, the ones in no, Puerto Rico. They're not, not reptilian like. Yeah. It looks like a dog, which I also, you know, I was just watching the Westminster Dog Show the mm-hmm. other day. Um, I just happened to be channel surfing. Sure, you were. Uh, jobbed it on there. You You've know, never missed one. Go and uh, you know, like they had a Mexican hairless dog on there, mm-hmm. as well as some other breed. I don't remember the name of it, but I'm like, <clears throat> here it is. It's known to roam southwestern United States in the in the northern Mexico. I mean. Looks like it could be a chubacabra to me. Yeah. I think that it's a lot like uh, some of maybe our history is the way we, there was a lot more hominids. We already know that there's a type of coyote wolf cross. I discussed that a few shows back that they found down here in southern Texas. So why couldn't there be something along maybe used to once time, maybe not now, but, you know, once or maybe even now, maybe that they are kind of like the thylacine, right? That they're just little hidden pockets throughout these areas. Of them, well, there definitely was a North American hyena mm-hmm. that existed in America. Yes. It, was, it I think died out during the Pleistocene, so about seven hundred and eighty thousand years ago is the last time they think they were around. The same as like the North American jaguar mm-hmm. or the North American. Uh, I'm sorry, the North the cheetah. So the, seren, the American Serengeti cheetah. So if you can see ghosts of humans, why couldn't you see the ghost of a once existing North American hyena? Hyena. Hynea. That's right. Right? I mean, why is that not possible? So that leads, well, of course it's possible. That leads back into this, the Adirondack Park in New York. Mm. Back in 2010 in the Southern Adirondacks, which is America's apparently largest wilderness park, this fella writes in and says, My wife and I saw what can only be described as a hyena chasing several deer across the road. Now, lucky for us, again, I reached out to Lon. Lon's like, hey, check all this out. He's my go-to guy. Yeah. Right? And so he's the the encyclopedia of some strange and unusual stuff. Says that this animal, this fellow writes, that this animal literally stopped dead in front of the car, staring back at us for 10 seconds before it moved off. Says, I have been in the woods my whole life, raised with a gun since childhood, and spent my summers on Lake Champlain, Champlain which made me think of Champ right then, right? right? Yep. The person writes that I have hunted, fished, instructed archery and rifle range, hiked, even coon hunted at night, owned horses, ridden horseback through the wilderness, and presently live with all kinds of wildlife on my lakefront creekside property. And I had thought I had seen it all, but I had no idea what this was, other than to say it was a hyena. It was very large, 150 to 175 pounds. Now, here's what's strange. Listen, listen here. Long, bushy tail, brindle, wiry, spotted, brown, black, and gray coat with a powerful predator build, thick lower jaw, rounded, diamond-shaped, triangular head with rounded ears setting high on the head, and what appeared to be a mane running down the back, originating on the neck. Mm. Its hind legs were noticeably shorter than the front and much thicker and more powerfully muscled than the front, so that the animal sloped down in the powerful rear. I have seen countless hyenas on Discovery in National Geographic and Wild Kingdom as a kid, and there is no other option than this strongly resembled a spotted hyena. So I immediately went home and searched it, and amazingly, it said that the mountain hyena once roamed the Adirondacks and Appalachians. Well, I have news. At least one still does. My wife and I, with me at the time, actually called New York Econ at Raybook. And when we got home, got laughed at, even receiving an errant email back ridiculing my report, which was accidentally sent to me instead of an Incon co-worker. Now, this really made me mad as I made friends with my local Incon worker who liked to use my property to catch poachers. Although we do have an animal park at the end of the lake, when I called, they assured me that they have never had any spotted hyenas. I was only shortly after, or it was only shortly after, I saw the Monster Quest episode describing a similar animal in Maine, while the Shunka Warican was well known to the Iroquois as the dog killer. 
The supposed animal famous mount seems far too small and pig-like to be what I saw. Now, its legs are far too scrawny, and it seems far less canine than what we saw. Also possessing a longer straight coat and thinner snout. It's funny that this person writes that it seems far less canine whenever hyenas aren't canines, right? Aren't they yeah. cats? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think they're either. Are they like some other kind of species altogether? Yeah, yeah, they're odd creatures. But what this person's describing is a freaking hyena in New York, in the Adirondacks. Now, if you look at pictures of that part of the world, in the Adir- you could understand where it'd be easy to lose something up there. Yes. It's beautiful, and it is thick and heavily wooded. Now, he goes on to say that my property has creek, uh, lakefront, it's got fish spawns, deer, coyotes, foxes, eagles, fishers, turkeys, ducks, herons, owls, geese. Goes on and on. He said an occasional black bear. This fall, he said, there was a yearling moose. I've seen it all, and I can identify all of it. But I've never seen anything like this. As close as I can come, it is a spotted hyena. So we take that story from New York, and we jump further down south. We jump into 2015. Now, there is a thing called the Paranormal Roundtable, all right, on uh, YouTube, I believe. And they did a whole story about hyena cryptids. And these stories I have to share with you. Now, the one, this one comes from Austin, Texas, where a fella said that a man working for a computer firm had just arrived in Austin. He'd only landed the job and was still getting moved. And one night, two days after arriving in town, he left work and was driving home when he observed a large or big wolf-like hyena-looking creature running on all fours beside his car. He goes on to say that it kept pace with him. Now, they don't tell you the speed that the man was traveling. But he says that this creature looked part wolf, part hyena, and appeared to, you ready, have hands. It ran bizarrely and eventually veered off into the woods. What state was this? This is in Texas. It's in Austin. Jesus. Yeah. There was another one, though, here. It says in Alexandria, West Virginia, that says a truck driver was hauling a load near Alexandria that he claims that he was attempting to avoid a pothole when he accidentally veered off the road into some bushes. He managed to get back on the road, but as he did, he observed something weasel-like pop its head out from the brush. It then jumped back on two legs and ran off. Says it looked to him like a giant weasel with a hyena face. It had claws or hands and short, stubby legs. I wonder how big it was. He never does really say the size when you talk about the weasel thing. You know what I'm saying? Is it weasel sized or is it like the size of, you know, seven foot tall? Like how big is this creature? I'm going to speculate that it was probably dog sized because if it was weasel sized, how would you be able to see after you'd (laughs) driven past the size of its legs, its face and its hands? And what's it doing? Swerving off the road? Right. He's dodging potholes, man. So again, in 2015. Makes me wonder if. Had to be, <laughs> there was the jazz cabbage involved, drinking a little or something. I mean, I understand. I ain't hate, <laughs> but at the same time, this is when you're reported to see a weasel-like hyena-faced creature right. with hands. When you've been you've been off in the bottle a little bit. Now here's one from San Angelo, brud. And I know it's been a while since you've been down there. So it says in 2015, an elderly woman was driving with her niece and her dog in San Angelo when they decided to pull over, let the dog out to do its business. As they waited, a large hyena-like creature came from under a nearby fence and attacked the dog. The hyena creature then proceeded to stand up on two legs and walk back towards the fence, at which point the elderly woman attacked the creature with her cane, allowing the dog to scamper away from its grasp and back into the van. (laughs) The dog had a punctured lung, but survived. Police investigated the area, and they believed that it was simply a coyote, though the woman and the niece believe otherwise. So this old gal, something grabbed Fluffy, and she went into action and went to whipping an upright walking canine hyena-like creature okay. with her cane. An upright cane uh, hyena. 
a hyena. Yeah, that was dog size. Come out from under the fence. Now look, I'm 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 down with seeing like okay, you've seen dogs shoot out from people's backyards and come out and all. <laughs> now imagine it grabs it and then just stands up on its back legs and just has its swag as it walks back no, to its. No, I can't. Its, I can't imagine yeah. that. Well, I, I I refuse to imagine that. <laughs> I can't. You can't bring myself to it. Not even going to play that game with them? I can't. Not I can't believe it. that's real. So here's you another. This one comes from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mm. LSU, baby. Yeah. Go Tigers. This is from the <laughs> mid-70s. All right? Oh, yeah. All from right. the mid-70s. Now, one of the hosts that describes this, that was on this paranormal roundtable, is talking that this involved a family member of theirs. It says that, and that's what sparked this interest. And he goes on to say that his grandfather was a man named JD and was a truck driver. And his grandmother was named Sophie. And they were driving near Baton Rouge, Louisiana, when they observed something come out of the woods and move towards the road on all fours. Now, as they approached it, the creature, which they described as looking like, ready? A hyena stood up on two legs. The back legs were short while the upper part of its body was bulky. Now, the grandmother thought this was the weirdest thing. Now, the host, of course, in this show goes on to explain that he spoke to her in 2005 before she passed and that her story never changed and that the grandfather, which did not believe in any of the paranormal, had told the host, too, about another strange encounter he had near Marfa, Texas. And he claims to have seen not one, but a few of these bipedal, I believe, coyote creatures, it says here. Coyote-like creatures or coyote people wandering around a small canyon area what dog men so if you have dog men right we've had them we've discussed them we've had people on that talk about this that they've seen them yeah why can't you have hyena men i mean you're right i How mean like, where does seen, it stop right what was the the i know you're you're gonna know exactly this and, and i just is it skinwalkers what's the one that's the uh the stephen king story with the movie where they're cats remember Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can't think of the name of it now. But wh why can't like, there be upright walking like mountain lions? Like, why haven't seen mountain lion people? Yeah, I like, uh, remember the, uh, in True Blood, uh, Stackhouse, remember his, he was uh, friends with the- A panther. The, the panther people. Yeah, they were the panther people. I never know what happened to that. Like, that storyline just kind of dropped. Yeah. Anyways, but you're right. Like, um, why is it uh, easy to believe in Sasquatch or easy to believe in uh, dogmen? Because we've seen werewolf movies, but you're like upright walking hyenas, totally ridiculous. Yes, yeah, right. It can't be. It can't be. Maybe it was dog men. They just resemble hyenas. Maybe because hyenas do kind of look like dogs. Oh, if uh, I was, I was being that to be just a little bit of a smartass, right? Is right. because you would know. You would call him a dog the minute you saw it. Yeah, like nobody, you know. It's when you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, that's that's just a dog. Because we all go off the way things are built. You know what I mean? Like sure. you look at them, you're like, that moves like a cat. Okay, that moves like a dog. And we talk about it all the time. Your eyes will lie to you. Because yes. when you see something, your brain tries to fill in the gaps, right? Tries so to make sense It's going to be like, oh, that that looks like a hyena to me. And somebody else might look at it and be like, no, that looks like a chow chow to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this took place in Pennsylvania, mid-2017. I said, I wanted to inform you of a possible sighting my mother and I had about six months ago. While in the process of moving to Waymark, PA in Wayne County, all right? One night while we were driving back down to New Jersey, we drove past what we thought at first was a hyena. It was on all fours. Looked like it weighed about two to three hundred pounds. It had rather long brown black fur, especially around its shoulders, where it stood up a couple of inches from the body and had a sloping back. And it was on the opposite side of the road walking towards us. Now, we only caught a glimpse of it, and we were driving on Route 6 in Pike County, traveling around 55 miles an hour. So it wasn't like we had a lot of time to study it, but it really freaked my mother out. Now, I'm much more skeptical, so I wrote it off as a black bear with some type of birth defect or deformity. But after hearing that others have reported something similar in the same area, I thought I should do the same. It's from a lady named N. But now we jump up into Stamford, Texas, back in 2013. So in Stamford, it's right, it's at 11 p.m. A man was driving his mid-sized Toyota with his wife in a very rural forested area. Now, for those of you that don't know, Stamford's north of Abilene, Texas. Oh. 
It's not that far from here. No, no, not that far. Abilene's at all. like what, 115 miles from here? So it'll be about an hour and a half, <clears throat> probably. Yeah. Now, as they drove, they claimed they observed an object in the road, and the wife initially thought it was a tumbleweed. And as they got closer, they realized that it was not a tumbleweed, but an animal of some kind. It began to give chase on all fours. They described it as an enormous, prehistoric-looking, almost horse-sized hyena. Horse-sized? Yes. It reached from the back of the front door to the front of the car, and it was as tall as the car. It had rings around its body, which culminated at the top of its head. It also had a ridge or a hump on its back. It ran alongside the car and even bumped it, putting a dent in its side before eventually veering off into the woods. Now, how do you explain that? A horse-sized hyena. That's what I'm saying. How do you explain that? And they were close enough to see it, and it bumped the car and dent the car. You don't mistaken a horse that's in in the... And first of all... Not every Texan has horses and sees horses and, and all that. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you, when you live out in areas like that where Stanford is, you could pretty much say that every one of those Texans have seen a horse. And is very, <laughs> uh, definitely familiar with the size of it. Yes. Yeah. Like you wouldn't mistake a house cat for the size of a horse. You know what I mean? Like No. Uh, you don't have to be a quarter horse trainer to know. What horses look like? That the, Well, the at least relative size. So say it was a mis. She misjudged the size, and it turns out it was only the size of, like, a Shetland pony. So it still, wasn't 15 or 16 hands. It might have just been, like, 11 hands But still, or something. That's, yeah. that, even if it was the size of a pony, yeah. how do you explain that? And for people out there, ponies don't grow up to be horses. They are two separate animals. <laughs> I met a person not too long ago. They thought, like, a pony was like a little horse. Yeah. And then a pony became a horse. I'm like, no, nah, man, that's a completely different, different animal. It's a little bit different. Yeah, like a Shetland. A yeah, Shetlander yeah. just that is just a different species, just a smaller species. You don't, especially when they're that close to your car. Right, right. They're so right that would you. that would give you something to scale the size of the creature you were seeing, right? Because yes. you're in your car. Close enough to touch it. It's as big as your car. Unless you're driving one of those little smart cars, you would be like, you know, this thing's the size of my Crown Vic. Yeah, right. As you're rolling down through there. Can you, I can't imagine a horse-sized hyena. No, because I, and. Uh, I think spotted hyenas are probably the largest in Africa. They're about the size of like a Great Dane or Irish Wolfhound. I mean, they're large. And they look the so size thick. of horses. Like what are those where it shows like those gang members in Africa that's got them like as pets on chains? Yeah. Those see, things are terrifying. Yeah. Hyenas are scary looking, man. Oh, man. Just scary looking. First of all, if you ever watch any nature docs, I mean, they're very annoying. I understand they have to be opportunistic to, to survive. Yeah. But when you watch like a lion or a cheetah make a kill and it's trying to feed its cubs, and then here come these annoying hyenas. Here comes steal 25 it. hyenas yeah, showing. They, they steal it. They just look they just look <laughs> annoying, jerks. right? They're real jerks. I mean, I have to say, when I watch the male lions destroy them, like I'm a small part of me feels good. Oh, I like, cheer yeah, for the, the lion that, all the time. Take that. Take that. Yeah. I cheer for the lion all the time. And I don't know why. What like why are some animals, you know, you're okay with and other ones you're like, nah. Like, I like sloths. I'm down with always trying to help them. I don't understand how they're alive. <laughs> what I like is all the big cats. That just They just lay there and take their eating. They're just like, here it comes. <laughs> and they don't, there's no, what's their defense? I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I don't know how they're still all our thing. Like, I think, how does it survive from being born to adulthood without something in the jungle jacking it? Because the jungle, everything is constantly attacking each other. I don't. I think they've lived this long because I think over all these years, even primitive man used to help them things out. The only thing I can t- t- maybe is they taste horrible. Maybe. So like cats and stuff are like, nah, I ain't messing with it. No, nah, they eat them. They do. Yeah, you can pull up some videos of them things getting jacked by like big birds swooping down and grabbing them and all that stuff. Like a harpy eagle. Oh, I'd like yeah. to have some sloth tacos. I would. I would eat one if somebody was like, hey, look, put it in know. an Insta Pot. I bet you if you put it in there for a couple some of hours. Onions, some potatoes, yeah. some peppers. Some aju. Right? It'd be all right. So, back on this little kick. Now we're talking about in the early 1990s out in Odessa, Texas. Mm-hmm. Just drove through there. A bunch of Odessa oil workers were leaving work around 9 p.m. And they had piled into a pickup truck 
and began driving down a road and the other workers were following behind in another truck. When something came out of the forest, it says here, which forest. there's no forest. <laughs> there may be some brush, but there's no forest out there, folks. <laughs> yeah. But this thing come out and actually bit the tire of the truck. It says the driver swerved and was lightly clipped by another vehicle. They apparently had run over the creature, which took off running into, you ready? The woods. <laughs> well, the you know, when you're working on the rigs and you, you know, doing a little crystal and you've been up for four days. You oh, could there's probably, trees and stuff out there. Yeah, but it's not You can not imagine like, a hyena biting your... You, you want to make sure you got to be real careful. But it goes on here that says, get ready for this. The numerous witnesses on the scene were shocked by the creature, which they described as a hyena-like beast about the size of a large hog. They guess that it weighed between 400 and 500 pounds. Mm. It had a tail which was tucked between its legs. When it came out of the woods, the witness claimed that it appeared to do so with a purpose. And the creature was on all fours throughout the encounter. So we don't have any more crazy, I'm going to walk off style stuff, right? Yeah. Now, this last one I want to read to y'all comes from a Reddit user back in 2014 named Anna Banana <laughs> Double O, right? Okay. Love these names. And Anna Banana sends this. It says, my friends and I went to Mexico for a holiday. We rented out a bungalow with some woods and stuff at the back. They went out to get more beer and just some shopping, and I was left behind to have a shower. After yelling that they were going to double lock the door, they left. Now, the shop was about a 15-minute walk away, and I was literally just going to wash my hair, make some tea, and watch some TV until they got back. About five minutes went by, and I heard a knock on the front door. Now, this, this is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Weird is my friends have keys to this apartment. I just guessed that they were too lazy to use the keys and forgot something. I literally got out of the shower with bubbles in my hair and was walking towards the door with a towel just wrapped around me. The door had a panel of textured glass in the middle, and I could see this massive entity standing there. My friends and I are quite small, and the guys have blonde hair. This thing looked big and black and was very tall. Whatever it was, it's tapping on the door, and I'm standing in the entrance to the kitchen just peeking around the corner. I don't want it to see me, and I slowly crouch down and crawl to the sofa, and it's still just tapping on the door. After what seems like ages, it just walks off, and the textured glass is just back to normal with nothing on the other side. My friends come back, and Jake, was, Jake just quickly opened the door and goes, Oh my God, Amanda. We were walking back and we turned the road where the room is, right? And we see this massive thing. It looked like a hyena. That's all I can describe it as, but only it was walking on two legs. At least someone else saw it. He's still going on. Yeah, and as we saw it, it started making a weird yelling, growling noise. I swear to you, Amanda, it walked off on those two legs and back into the forest. Wow, another dogman-like sighting. Another dogman-like sighting. So, we have crazy hyenas, crazy dogman sightings, and I don't... I don't I'm going to wrap it up with this, okay? Sure. Now, this is more of the dog men, not necessarily hyenas. Lon received this, and this is something that I like. Oh, I just like the way the whole story works out. They were two huge cryptid canines got after a couple of fellas in southern Ontario. Now, Lon talks about that he, had, he received a phone call from a fella that identified himself as R.M., and then RM started telling about him and three other men were attempting to harvest a marijuana crop that had been planted in a cornfield back in October of 2017. I said that the corn had been, that all the tall thorns had been standing about eight to 10 foot tall and that the feed corn harvest was about to take place and it was time to pull the weed. So this is what the fella RM says. We got into the field and fanned out. It was farthest to the right. Straight ahead in the distance was a blue flash of light that originated in the cemetery. It looked like it was 10 to 15 foot off the ground, and then there was a loud crashing thump like something heavy fell. Then a few hundred foot to the left, the exact same thing happened, like a blue ring-shaped flash of light. These things tore out of the trees and into the corn at an incredible speed, faster than any live creature 
I'd ever seen move. Supernaturally fast. Whatever they were, they began to bluff charge me and my friends, running at me three or four times and stopping just outside of the range of direct sight, maybe two or three rows of corn away. They were as big as grizzly bears and as fast as race cars. They were going between me and my buddies. Then I saw the head and shoulders of one, a large wolf-like head with pointed ears and broad shoulders. The head had no neck and was situated directly on the shoulders. It was a terrifying sight. There was zero doubt in my mind as to what I had just seen. It was 10 feet away at the max. Just then it charged me from the front and left and then my buddy's dog came in from the right. I thought it had been flanked and almost shot the or I thought I had been flanked and almost shot the dog who was losing her mind at the time, whining and whimpering and shaking profusely nonstop. At that point, I started praying to Jesus, and the two dog creatures, or whatever they were, instantly turned and hightailed it out of the cornfield back towards the cemetery. So my buddies and I found each other, and the guy said that they had been charged too. The guy who had driven us there said he had seen it. I told him I did also. I continued to pray as I looked in the direction where I saw them run off to. We had a serious job still to do. They were thousands of dollars sitting in the field. We got things harvested and wrapped up, ready to move out of there. Well, they doubled back around on us because when my friend and I were struggling with dragging the big blue tarp full back along the tractor excess route, we passed a large bush. One of these creatures was right there. My friend screams out, there's a wolf. As I looked up, it was running like a man on two legs. The creature only ran about 10 feet into the woods and stopped dead in its tracks. My friend and I were ready to go, and he says to me, Is it coming back to get us? I just started praying out loud again, and nothing else happened. We dragged everything to the car. Because it's a little hatchback, someone had to stay behind. So I thought, well, this is great. There's something seriously messed up going on here. That only seems to be kept at bay by prayer. These guys don't know that I've been praying, so one of them is going to get killed if I don't stay. I think that it was the Holy Spirit protecting me, and I strongly felt it. So the dog and I stayed behind and spent the next hour on the road. As she whined and cried and freaked out, I was praying and holding my ground. I did notice that one creature came up behind the embankment that was along the entrance to the field and stood there, pacing back and forth. I then saw another creature was now on the other side of the entrance road behind a huge blackberry bush that hangs over the ditch, it was no more than 10 foot from us. The dog was freaking out so badly that it almost got me. I thought she might just drop from a heart attack. Every time I see the dog now, I know she is remembering it too. She just gives me a look and starts shaking. She has strongly bonded to me since that day. I was never so happy as when those headlights came back over the hill and my friend pulled up to get us. It seemed like forever that we were on that road, but in reality, it may have just been an hour tops. When we got back, my friend said, did you see the size of that dog, bro? And I just looked at him and said, I do not want to talk about it. And we're back with Expanded Perspectives. Wow. All right? Come wild ass hyena and dog man. But the last, okay, we've discussed this and it's always fun to talk about. Why are the dog men so hateful? Why are they... Know. Overly aggressive. And this took place in Ontario where these people Ontario, saw. yes. And it looked like when it's pacing back and forth, the one. My question is to this. Why you got to harvest the weed at night? Is it maybe because, was it illegal at the time? I'm sure. You know, so they're harvesting it because I would think harvesting weed at night wouldn't be a good a good idea. But I understand if it was 100% illegal. I mean, yeah, I'm assuming it was legal. But yeah. like what, once again... This, and there's a lot of dog man sightings. This was on in Ontario, but lots of times in Wisconsin, Michigan, up there in that area. What could you mistake in that for? How could a group of people be out doing something at night, whether it's shady or not, and they see what looks like a troop of dog men? Yeah. Or like reminds me of that movie Dog Soldiers. Yep. Remember, that was an awesome movie. Uh, like, what are they seeing? How can... Well, I like how they said that there was a blue light that originated over like by, of course, there's always a cemetery, but like this crazy blue light and the way it originated. And then you could hear physically the sound of something dropping in. 
Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like they're being dropped off from the mothership, or they're coming over from the other side. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I don't know. It's crazy. But okay, so we go back into it with the hyenas. Yeah. Why do so many people see now? As we always say so many people. When you do, of course, what is there, less than a two dozen stories? But still, where do these hyena sightings come from? Because nowadays, like we've discussed, it's more openly acceptable for you to report you see something that looks like a Bigfoot, right? And yeah. it has been for several years. And also with them making it more popular on television, of course, it's going to bring out some more uh, trolls. But with you making it more popular about black-eyed kids or about dog man, people are going to be more apt to report those. But when you see something that looks a hyena, hyena-like, nobody reports seeing that because everybody – so what I'm getting at is if somebody was to see one and they didn't – you know, they just saw – they wouldn't really report it because you'd be like, there's no way that was real. I am losing my mind because nobody sees a hyena in North well, America. And if it was a normal sized hyena, that would be one thing. Like especially in Texas. I'd be like, yeah, somebody But a five hundred pounder <laughs> had a private one in their collection and it got loose. But one the size of a horse or a five hundred pounder, I mean, that just that doesn't make sense. That defies belief because it's not that's not a normal thing, even for the plains of Africa. No. Hyena, hyenas don't get that big. It just doesn't work out like so, that. No. So what could they be seeing? I Texas, Texas sized hyenas. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I have no idea. What if it's some crazy, like, baller out of control drug lord that's having, like, uh, these hyenas are uh, being genetically uh, Yes, they're genetically in a altered. Lab. Yes, for them to be like security dogs sure. for their place. That's possible. It's like, right here's the meth lab. Right here's our, where we uh, make our production of heroin. You remember. And right here we create a giant uh, hyenas. Hyenas. Uh, cerebus like hyenas. <laughs> Do you remember uh, the the old movie Swamp Thing? Yeah. Okay. So you remember like the crazy pig guy? There's actually and all a new. There's actually a new one coming out. Oh, is there really? Yeah. Luke's already showed me the trailer. Okay, I'll have to watch that because I liked the old one. Yeah. So I think one of the like ones the had like guy. Heather Locklear when she was yeah. really young. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, and then the Swamp Thing dude was huge. He's a great big guy, and he was like a a scientist. So I think of stuff like that when they make the pig guys and all the pig and all the, the yeah, different crossbreeds. Yeah, yeah. I think of stuff like that. So I always like to leave y'all with some funny historical stuff and then a good dad joke. So I've got some crazy historical stuff to read to y'all, and I think Kyle, you're going to enjoy this. Okay. Have you ever heard of the Operation Blue Peacock? No. All right. Back in 1957, the British Army of course, was a little worried about uh, the Soviet Union and thought that they might sneak over and invade into West Germany. So the British Army came up with a plan called Operation Blue Peacock. All right? Okay. So what they wanted to do was, now this sounds like a lovely idea, they built nuclear landmines. Okay. Yeah, you heard me. <laughs> nuclear landmines. Doesn't land sound like mines. a good idea, but... Each one of these landmines, Kyle, had half the capacity... As the bomb that, that was dropped on Nagasaki. <laughs> Each one of these landmines. All right. Jeez. Well, they, you could definitely space them out quite a bit, <laughs> like one per county. You would definitely know if somebody got on one. Yeah. So they was a, first of all, <laughs> they wanted to bury them, but here's a problem. All right. There's, there's, yeah, there's definitely Multiples. a problem. The main problem was the mines needed to be warm to detonate. So they had to be warm. Okay. And of course, winters in, in Germany, in West Germany, are a little airish, if you will. So they said, well, what we'll do is we'll wrap these mines in these fiberglass pillows like this insulation. Is what the British troops said. That's what we'll do. We'll bury them all wrapped up. They'll stay warm. But there was another proposal. This proposal was they took these, these casings that they put these mines in, okay? Yeah. And they put enough bird seed or chicken feed and water in it. And they were going to pack it with chickens and have live chickens buried with these mines. And these live chickens would live and eat and drink and finally die. But they would be in there long enough that it would keep their body heat would keep these mines warm, ready to trigger. Because they're not talking about leaving them. They just knew, like, if they invade, we can keep these chickens in there for X amount of time. So they were going to secretly bury nuclear landmines and chickens in some countryside but they knew this wasn't of course and then the ministry of defense the mod come up and was like hey look this is not going to work out real well no this and is a horrible idea because they said what we don't want is to contaminate the rest of europe so they finally canceled the whole idea of this thing 
a year later. Operation Peacock? Operation Blue Peacock. Wow. Is what they were going to set off explosive chicken bombs in the, the allied countryside around <laughs> West <laughs> Germany or whatnot of this whole thing. Wow. Now that sounds like a terrible idea. It's hard to believe that, that was a real a real story. So I tell you that story to leave you with this. Kyle, why do chicken coops have only two doors? I don't know. Because if they had four, they would be called chicken sedans. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. So I uh, hope y'all enjoyed some crazy chicken. We've got animal humor and strange animal oddities on today's show. Yeah, man, that's um, very interesting. I, I don't know what people are saying. Once again, I leave the show more confused than when I arrived. <laughs> uh, so often the case. Um, if you have any stories or sightings of your own you would like to share with me and Cam, please email the show, expandedperspectives at yahoo.com. Uh, Cam, what do you got planned for your week? Uh, I've got a lot of work to get done because of the way the weather's been sidetracking me. I have a lot of sampling I have to get done and get things caught up for for this whole week. But yeah, it'll just be... Go, go, go. This week will be, you know, pretty, pretty busy. I got some stuff I got to get lined out at work. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm about the same. I've got lots of work and a continuing education. So try to keep my nose to the grindstone. I hope everybody out there has an amazing week. Be careful. Give somebody a hug. Till next time, I'm Kyle Filson. He's Cam Hale. Peace, y'all.